Today I'm going to be taking a look at this Nokia FPS 21. This unit is designed to service older Nokia phones. So not very useful these days. I did find software for this a long time ago. I've actually had this thing for years and I just haven't done a video on it. The software is pretty old and I doubt I could track it down again. I forgot where if I saved the uh, installer. I've reinstalled Windows since then. On the front, there's a simple LCD function button, which just cycles through some stuff. Reset button, some LEDs for status, smart card reader, and one other proprietary service cable connection. Around back, there's another proprietary connection, LAN, two USB host ports, USB device port, and 12 volt power through a barrel jack. On the side, there's a little side hatch. This opens up, I think this is a SD card slot. And the whole chassis is made out of really heavy duty aluminum, and it's very heavy and yeah, nice, very well built. I don't think these things were particularly cheap, mostly because they're proprietary and whatnot. If I connect some power, it just goes through a normal boot sequence. And then uh, once it's started up, you just get simple system to just view the status, serial number, no PC connection, no phone connection, 256 megs of RAM, eight gigs worth of SD card storage. Uh, if I plug it into USB, it does detect. If I recall correctly, it doesn't really do anything without the software. And uh, you can see it's got an IP address and I don't think any ports are open. So I don't think it really does anything unless you configure it. But you can see there's firmware for the FPGA and stuff in there. So there should be some good stuff. Yep, this side hatch reveals not one, but four SD card slots, although only two of them actually have SD cards installed. Yeah, it's just a set of two four gig cards. They're actually somewhat useful, at least. I mean, four gigs, pretty small, but hey, there's a, uh, I've got a bunch of old cameras and crap lying around. Funny how the interface detects it as eight gigs, even though it's two separate four gig partitions. I guess it just uses it all as raw space. Not really sure how I'm going to get this out unless it just kind of pries out, which I think it might. Yeah, just a standard aluminum chassis. So it's a dual board construction. It looks like the bottom PCB is strictly just the smart card reader. So I'm going to see if I can just take that off. So the heatsink is a very nice machined piece of aluminum and that's where the majority of the weight in this thing's coming in. Not that it's super duper heavy because it is aluminum, but still. This is the display. It's a little standard LCD with a very dim backlight on it, which I didn't even realize it had until a little while after I started filming. The LCD looks like it's just a standard interface and I do like it. It is cool. It's like the text is so tiny on it. It'd be neat to put into like a little portable project, but OLEDs are pretty well readily available now and e-ink and stuff. So this is the dusty smart card module. It doesn't have anything on it except the smart card reader. I did notice that there are pads in there for a different part. It's possible that there's some other kind of component that goes here, maybe an SD card reader or something in different models. So the main board is actually very nicely made using top quality components. They've got a whole bunch of power supply stuff to run the FPGA, which is a Xilinx Spartan. They have a main Freescale CPU, which is running at 400 megahertz, according to the upside down text. This will be your 256 gigs of memory, the magnetics for the gigabit ethernet controller. Surprised they have gigabit on this. I guess they really do use up all the space on these things because uh, why else would you need a gigabit ethernet controller on this? Unless they just put it in because money is no object in this thing. But it's mostly just power supply stuff and uh, SD card slots really. So essentially all this thing does from my understanding is that it basically just is a glorified EEPROM programmer. I mean it just programs 
the internal storage on Nokia phones, but it also supplies power and can read back the voltage and stuff like that. So, you know, fancy file copier. These are pretty interesting side mounted USB connectors. I haven't quite seen them like this. They're very sturdy. They're like heavy duty solder tabs. Plus they have the screw mount. So these things will last. That's a, that's a nice design. I'm sure those were quite expensive. All the power supply stuff. This will be your uh, boot flash for the uh, FPGA. Probably a USB controller or a hub. Tons of decoupling on the bottom. Looks like there's more power supply stuff. Bunch of fuses, input caps, protection diode. Very nice, very well built. I'm sure they charged a lot more than what it cost, but I'm sure these things weren't cheap to make. You know, I got this thing so long ago, I forgot what I paid for it, but I know it wasn't much. I'm sure it was a little bit more than the value of two four gig SD cards though, which is pretty much all I'm gonna get out of it. I did check what was on these. From what I can tell, it's just installation files for some kind of phone games. I saw a few JPEGs and they looked like they were game assets and a couple jar files and that's it. Very nice piece of hardware, although awfully specialized and not very useful anymore. 